In this discussion, we will discuss the discussion question of list types of special journals and how they are used. If we see a discussion question like this, we may first want to approach this by defining what special journals are and when they would be used, and then discuss how they would be used. That would be leading into the discussion of how they would be used. When we're thinking about special journals, we're typically thinking about journals that would be used in more of a manual system rather than an automated system. The goal of the special journals being to lessen the data input process uh, throughout the time period in order to do things faster, more efficiently. The way we are going to be able to do that is to be able to, rather than record a general journal for each and every transaction, having a debit and credit, at least one for each transaction, and post each one to the controlling general ledger account, we could list similar accounts in these special type journals, grouping similar accounts, accounts that are going to be uh, similar in nature, and by doing so, we can have columns representing the information needed, uh, and lessen the amount of data then that would be needed to input into the special journals. We can restrict ourselves from posting each each transaction to the general journal or the general ledger until the end of the time period, at which time we can add up the uh, special journals and record one transaction for the entire time period, the month, the week, or uh, the the day, if we whatever we're doing this over. Typically, we'll be talking about it for the month and um, then record just one journal entry and that will hopefully save time for the data input process. Now the types of special journals we're going to have are going to be grouped by, by similarities in transactions. So if we think about the types of transactions that we're going to have, uh, we can have a sale on account. Uh, that would, If that's going to be our typical uh, transaction we have, we're going to put that in something we call the sales journal. Uh, if we have a purchase on account, meaning we purchase something like inventory on account, we're going to put that into something we'll call the purchases journal. If we uh, are expending uh, cash for giving cash uh, or buying something with cash, we can group all those transactions into something like a cash payment journal. And anytime we receive cash, we can group all those transactions into something like a cash receipts journal. So those are going to be some of the most common type of journals we'll have. We might want to get into some more detail in terms of when we would use those because uh, the names can be a little bit uh, deceiving uh, for them. Uh, the cash receipts and cash payments are pretty straightforward, but um, they can still be a little complicated just in the types of transactions we have for them. So uh, if, we thought, if we talk about the sales journal, for example, you would think that anything dealing with sales would go in the sales journal, but sales for cash would not go in the cash in the, in the sales journal because we would be receiving cash at that point in time and therefore it would go into the cash receipts journal so that's going to be one of the mo you know the main kind of uh confusions when talking about these types of journals the sales journal is really kind of like a accounts receivable journal meaning we made a sale on account now if it's a service company we're talking about or if a company is on a periodic system we are just going to record uh, one column is all we need to record a debit to the uh, to the accounts receivable and a credit to sales or revenue. If we're on a perpetual inventory system and we're a merchandising company, we'll also need a column for the cost of goods sold, debit, and a related decrease in the inventory. When we talk about the uh, purchases journal, uh, once again, it is for purchases. However, if we were to purchase something for cash, then it would go in the cash payment journal. If um, we're purchasing something on account, then it goes in the purchases journal. Also, so really it's more of a accounts payable journal. So if we buy inventory, for example, then uh, that would be our normal transaction. We can record all those in the same journal and debit uh, inventory and credit the accounts payable. However, if we use the accounts payable for other transactions like paying expenses, we may have those transactions as well in the purchases journal because it's really kind of like an accounts payable journal. Then the uh, cash uh, receipts journal, it's going to be anytime we get cash. Now, hopefully, uh, to, to be most effective within these journal type processes, we get cash from a very uh, fairly standard type thing, for example. If we make sales for cash, then the cash receipts journal would be very useful and we would uh, record all those similar transactions with one column. 
But uh, if we have a lot of different things that happen, we get cash um, from from sales, and we have sales on accounts, so we get we get cash from uh, accounts receivable, and possibly there are investments in cash from the owner. Anytime you know cash is is uh, being received, it could go into this journal. So there are transactions that could be a little more confusing in the cash receipts journal, and then the cash disbursements journal, of course, is when cash is being dispersed. And this is probably the one that has the most types of, of things that could be in it because we pay for many different types of things when running the business. Whereas when we receive cash, we have a fairly limited things, uh, types of things at least, that we're receiving cash for. So the cash payment journal is best used when there's going to be uh, very similar transactions that we're buying stuff. Like we're buying supplies or we're buying uh, inventory or, you know, uh, and it's all pretty much the same. Or we're buying something. Uh, in the past on account we're paying it off at this time but uh, there could be a lot of different things we pay cash for so this could be one of the uh, larger journals and more confusing uh, types of journals now once we have all the journals set up at the end of the time period what we will do is we'll add up the the totals in all the journals and we'll make a journal entry at the end of the time period the day uh, the week or the month typically the month for us and that one journal entry for each of those journals will represent the activity for that entire time period that we just have to record one transaction in the general journal rather than a transaction for each each occurrence, each financial transaction. Uh, and then we will take that entry into the general journal, post it to the general ledger, the controlling accounts. We'll also um, enter this information into the subsidiary accounts, for example, accounts receivable and accounts payable the accounts listing out the activity by customer or vendor respectively and then once we have everything posted to the controlling uh, general accounts and those subsidiary accounts we will typically then create the trial balance and the financial statements from them so the goal of this of course is to save time so we're going to be putting it in the special journals in order to uh, record less transactions typically if using more of a manual system and then only needing to record one journal entry at the end of the time period representing all of the activity happened during the time period.